Hey guys, so I thought it'd be fun to share with you one of my experiences I had recently getting one of the very first advanced anti-aging treatments on my skin. I decided to do PRF and there's also a similar treatment called PRP. So if you're interested to know a little bit about why I chose PRF, what that even means, what is PRP, then keep on watching. I apologize up front because I am new to filming with landscape. I'm such a portrait girl. This is very tough. So if I look in the wrong direction, I apologize. And I'm probably going to refer to my notes a little bit just so I make sure I give you the right information. Okay, so let's get into it. So there are two different treatments I'm going to be talking about today and I'm going to show you, explain to you why I chose the PRF over PRP. We'll explain the differences and I'm definitely going to show you my before and after pictures and we'll talk about results and frequency of doing something like something like this. Okay, so the two procedures we're going to talk about today are PRP, which is platelet rich plasma and PRF, which is platelet rich fibrin. These are both advanced treatments and a lot of reasons why anyone would want to do a treatment like this for the face. I'm just talking for the face because you can do these on the scalp and the body too, but I'm just talking about face. You would want to do this, maybe if you have acne scarring, maybe you have really significant sun damage or you have fine lines and wrinkles. And that's kind of where I was laying because I'm in my midlife now, I'm 50 and I'm definitely even though I've done a lot of skincare over the last few years and all of that good stuff. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm like, yeah, we probably need to do a little bit more advanced treatments. Uh, and that's just because <clears throat> I have a lot of wrinkling under my eye area and it's, it's just my, my area of concern, my bugaboo. So I was kind of looking into what would be some good ways to help with fine lines and wrinkles under the eye area and that actually used your body's own composition. So PRP and PRF kind of became popular. It falls under that vampire facial category because that's this is where both those procedures are similar is because when you're doing a PRP or a PRF type of treatment, you need your own blood. So your physician is going to take blood from you and they're going to use that blood and put that in a centrifuge. And the centrifuge is going to be spinning that blood for you. How fast it spins will determine on, is based on if you're doing a PRP or a PRF type of treatment. As far as them putting that into your skin, they're gonna do that probably through a modality like microneedling, because we're gonna cause micro injury on our skin to have the ability to put back in these platelets. So the PRP, PRF, similar in that respect, both require blood, both go through a centrifuge. Now this is where the differences come through. So with PRP, you're gonna spin that really fast and you're gonna need an anticoagulant basically at the end. The end product is everything that floats to the top. And with that end product, we're gonna take that, put it back into our skin. So it does clot, so they use an anticoagulant. You gotta move quickly. Nothing wrong with that, works great. With the PRF, what I was researching and why I decided to do this was because you get 10 times more platelets than you do with PRP, basically is what I was researching. And that's great because the more I can get from my own uh, blood, the better, right? If I'm gonna go through this process, I want the, as much as I can and I want the best results that I can. So with the PRF, they take the blood, they're not spinning it as fast. It's really not that important to know those details, but this just makes it different. And I just wanted you to know the differences. The PRF isn't spun as quickly. So it's a little muddy. It's not as distinctly layered as your PRP might be because we're gonna put, we want some of those white blood cell counts or white blood cells. We want a little bit of those external growth, those epidermal, uh, external. We want our epidermal growth factors in there. We want our fibroblasts and if I'm getting 10 times more the amount of platelets in this process, then I'm going to have that much, that much more fibroblasts coming back into my skin. And fibroblasts is what's responsible for producing type 1 collagen in our skin. So this is why I decided to do the PRF. And you still have to move rather quickly, but you're not as under the pressure to move as fast if you're doing that PRF, which doesn't really apply to you as a client. It's just me talking as a practicing esthetician. Um, anywho. And so we went ahead, we did the PRF, 
got all the platelets, put it back to my skin. It does, it is a little bit of a pinch. I mean, we're still, we are numbed. We will be numbed. And, uh, but you're still gonna feel it. It's a little bit of a poke and microneedling can't hurt because we're going in a depth that we want to get into that dermal layer. So it's gonna feel, you're gonna feel it. <laughs> um, but it's not uncomfortable where you can't handle it. And you know, you're practicing uh, physician or nurse practitioner, whoever you're working with, um, will know what to do. So once that's been done, the process itself doesn't take more than about 30 minutes generally then the healing begins and so we've caused all these micro injuries and now we need to let the skin heal so what i'm going to do is show you the photos i'll show you my before and my after and i'm going to show you the days leading immediately following that treatment and then i also took a picture every week after that initial treatment the reason being is because typically results you're not going to see for about six weeks so and that's another thing about these types of procedures you want to make sure you know what the expectation is before going into the treatment. How much downtime will you have? Is there going to be any bruising? Are you going to be swollen? If so, for how long? What kind of things can you, what kind of topicals can you do? Can you put makeup on the next day? Um, you know, you want to have those questions answered so you know full well that you might have some downtime, which I, I definitely had some bruising and downtime, but it wasn't where I had to be home and couldn't go out. I mean, we're wearing masks, so it was actually a good time to do a procedure like this because half the time my face is covered anyway. Um, okay, so go ahead and check out my photos, okay? Okay, so obviously you could see there was some bruising. I was swollen. The bruising, I think, lasted for about three weeks. A week three is where I finally stopped seeing bruising. And I just let my skin heal on its own. I didn't use any additional topicals. I think maybe I took Motrin a couple times um, just to help with the swelling. Um, there are some topicals you can use, like Arnica has a really good, nice topical, I guess you could use. I didn't use it, but I've heard great things about it. So if, when I do do this again, because I've decided I probably will, uh, I'll definitely use that <laughs> to help minimize the bruising. The swelling was gone within a, you know, a couple days. And uh, really, that was about it. You know, I didn't really think that it was too invasive where I couldn't live my life every day. Um, I wound up you're able to do makeup the next day because I went to work the next day and I had full makeup on. So not necessarily an issue with that. I had it done on a, yeah, I had it done on a Tuesday and I did go to work Wednesday with, with makeup on. So, um, you know, you can, you can do that. You don't have to do that. Um, you can wait a few days, uh, but that's totally a personal preference as far as, as wearing the makeup. If you're going to do makeup, anytime you do a microneedling procedure, stay within the mineral makeup arena because uh, it's just a little healthier, cleaner for the skin because those micro injuries close pretty fast. I mean, the holes are there for like 15 minutes, so it's not like the holes are still there the next day. They're closed up, but you probably just want to keep the skin as clean and using the, as most you know healthy products as you can. You know, make sure your brushes are clean, your hands are clean, all that stuff because you just don't want to cause any infection or anything like that. But the bruising, you know, is part of it. That's why I say go into it knowing what could be some of the effects of your treatment. And, you know, make sure you do your research on your practicing physician, whoever you decide to use. Make sure you see a lot of before and afters. You want to see how their work is, you know, and uh, make your decision not just on price, but on quality as well. So, and... You know, with these pictures, I mean, your skin is going to look a little disturbed for a short amount of time, but the results are very long term. So six weeks is when you really start seeing a difference. My six weeks is now. So I kind of want to do this video. And I've been told that by some of my friends that they can definitely see a difference in just the clarity underneath my eyes um, as far as wrinkling goes. And, and I could tell a difference too. And then also this will last up to about six months 
two a year possibly i think it's more on the shorter side because i just did under the eyes um so in which case would i do it again in six months yes i'm considering doing it again in six months procedures like this are recommended two to four times a year but that is depending on your goals and where you are in your stage of life you know being that i am already in middle age i'm probably going to want to do it more frequently um and you know and my healing was good so you know I'm, I'm okay with having some bruising and now i know what to expect and how to treat it um so yes yeah, so as far as I've, i think we covered everything uh obviously if you have questions you can dm me and i hope you found this informative and useful i know it can be a little muddy out there as far as treatments go and what to do and how to you know choose what's best for you obviously you got to make your own decision come to your own conclusion and do your own research so that's very important when you're looking at doing anything related to the face because that's it's visible we see it for the most part obviously we're not always seeing our faces as much as we'd like but you get where i'm going with this but anyway so thank you so much for watching please feel free to subscribe there will be more content coming as far as uh regarding skincare procedures and if you like that then i suggest you keep on watching the videos and i will see you in the next one bye